Good morning. It's me, Pat Miller, Gabby Gourmet, and we are here for our favorite day of the week, Monday, when we get to do stir crazy in the kitchen at Roth, well, it's Roth Lifestyles mm -hmm. with the fabulous Lynn Thielen, but the more fabulous star mm -hmm. of our show, Ben Davis, or there'd be no show. Hey, True well, enough. Okay. <laughs> And I hope you all had a great weekend. And oh, yeah. This. Oh, yeah. Okay, Ben. First Gabby. of February. I know. Ah. Crazy to think <laughs> yeah. <that>. What <laughs> are we doing? Because this we're week gonna, is go. Well, we're, we're going to do, we're going to do a quick little salad with some fresh tuna, some roasted beets. We'll make a quick little dressing for that. We'll serve it with some some onions. I like a little parsnip in there fresh, give it a little sweetness. I love parsnips. Um, so we'll do those fresh. Um, and then, you know, a little bit of red onion just for something to cont. And we'll make a quick little crust for our tuna. So not difficult to throw together, but for the winter, you know, to have the roasted beets and stuff like that is nice. Um, you know, beets are one of those kind of around here, they almost seem perennial, but they really are good in the winter time. You know, you get a, you get that nice sweetness from the beets to go against the tuna. So I think we'll have It'll be a fun little salad that we'll throw together today. That sounds divine. Okay. I remember yeah. when nobody, so including me, ate a beet. Right? I mean, <sighs> I mean, I still know people who hate beets, but you know now. Here's one, you know, but now, I <laughs> now also, you know I, they're almost ubiquitous on a lot of like on a lot of menus. You'll see in restaurants yeah. there's some kind of yeah. beet salad. I mean, it just you know they hold. Um, they're pretty. Right, the color is nice. Right, everything's so, lovely it, if you like dirt. It, well, if you like <laughs> dirt, yeah, that's true. But, but the nice they thing, don't. They they do a better. You all do a better job now. Right, I, but any other thing is, is that never. Right, and we're we're here beginning of February, so you know if you wanted to to do this for Valentine's Day, it would be pretty for Valentine's Day as well with the redness of the beets and all that kind the of right stuff. The right colors. And um, I think we should know. tell everybody to stay tuned, don't give up, because this is not tuna salad like I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's got mayonnaise and tuna in it, but it's not a tuna salad, yeah. right? No. Okay, so. When I saw tuna salad, <laughs> I expected <laughs> you expected it to be tuna salad, right? Okay, no, chef. Not tuna salad. All right. <laughs> so, um, let's uh, let's start. Like, we'll start with the beets because that's going to take longer than anything else. Is getting the beets roasted. I like roasted beets. I'm not a big fan of boiling beets. I feel like they just taste like a canned beet, which is why most people hate beets, is because they were they had canned beets on. So I've roasted them. So I've got some right here on the stove and I'll show you what they look like here. Right? Let me just uh, zoom in over here. Here's some roasted beets. So I've just taken the beets oh. and I've cut, you can see I cut a little bit of the, I left a little bit of the stem, right? So about an inch of the stem. I took the root off the bottom, right? Got that cleaned off. Um, and then I tossed them with olive oil, a little salt and pepper, put them, and then I put a splash of red wine in the pan with it covered it with foil, pop it in a 375 degree oven and just cook them until you can take a, you know, a bamboo skewer like this and just easily insert it mm. into the beef, right? Now you know it's cooked you all the way through. You cut, is, do I see a cut on the top of the skin or not? Nope, nope, you do not. Okay, You all do right. not. Okay. So. Here's the fun part. This is the most fun part of doing roasted beets. You've got to peel them now. Yeah. You left, you didn't, right? This is what nobody wants to do, but you're, so here's the first thing you're going to need. You're going to need a kitchen towel that you're not particularly fond of. And I recommend if you've got gloves, gloves are good. <laughs> so you literally just take the beet, oh, it's put it into the nice. towel, and then just rub it ah. to take off that outer layer <laughs> of skin, right? Here comes the, the peel. Right, it just comes right off and you can see that the stem will come off as well. Just doing that over the sink. So now the beet is beautifully peeled, right? All that exterior is off. So let's just do one more. Can you put it and this, back? You can see what it does to the towel. I just popped it into the, back to the pan, which you is fine. You throw the towel what, away and you hope there is. Well, <laughs> you, 
you, you know, hope there's no murder mystery that they're going to go <laughs> for. But this will just keep, you know, this will keep your, your fingers from turning bright pink. Oh, God, could you green, imagine? Green, no, no. Because uh, beet is our... Notice I have a red cutting board too. So, yeah. um, you know, just, just one more precaution. So there you go, right. two nicely roasted beets, right? So there you go. I mean, that's all you have to do. Um, and you wanna do a roasted beet. And I just think the flavor of a roasted beet is so much nicer than the flavor of a boiled beet or something like that. So. I was gonna ask beet. Jeff. Yes, Lynn. Cause I have, I have never made beets before, shocking. Uh, I was going to say, what's another comment here? You know, if they're not roasted, what are they? But you boil them. Is what they're usually be. boiled, right? Yeah. Okay. You can pickle them as well. Um, mm -hmm. So now, what do you want to do? You want to cut them into whatever shape you like. You can dice them. I like to cut them in wedges, right? So we're just going to cut them into, you know, nice wedges. And these are a little still nice warm, but, you know, just a nice wedge and a little thinner if you want. Whatever you desire for your shape for your beef. But... Again, I'm a big proponent that if I'm eating a salad, I don't want to eat a, use a knife on a salad, right? Knives shouldn't be used on salad. So mm -hmm. I make sure that when we do a salad, we cut everything so that it's essentially bite-sized, right? Because that's, that's how it should be. The chef should be doing the work on the salad, not the, not the diner, right? Mm -hmm. so the oh, I totally agree. I, just, I, not, not, I think nothing people, drives me crazier than like whole romaine oh, heads that you got to take a uh, oh yeah or <laughs> even a big spinach leaf that I have to cut right. yeah I that mean I guess I guess the exception to that would be the wedge salad right you know you have to you when know, you do a kidding. classic wedge right. salad yeah um you can't really can't you're going to need a knife and a fork on a wedge salad so i think so just cut another half of a beet here i sort of think of beets in a salad is like a slice of tomato uh-huh you mm -hmm. can get to you know not any bigger so that you know you can get to it right right yeah well and just too big is just it, you know that's just a little too much when you just got too big really really <laughs> large it's just too big that's right okay <laughs> So there's our beets, they're ready to go. So let's just finish up the rest of our salad prep. Here's a, a quick little trick that you can use whenever you wanna serve some raw red onion in a salad or even on a hamburger, if you don't want that really strong bite to the onion and make it so that you remember that you've had, you've eaten a raw <laughs> onion for hours and hours, right? Um, take a bowl and fill it with um, ice water and then put a, a strainer in it right? So that there's no ice in it. And then just take your, what I've done with these ovens is I've just shaved them very, very thinly. So I'm just going to put those into the ice water for a few minutes, like two or three minutes. Just let them soak in that really cold water. And that's going to help take that bite out of it so that when you do put them in your salad, you're not going to, again, remember uh, that you've consumed <laughs> that raw onion, right? So just let them soak there. That's really a great little trick for that. And then let's mix up our dressing the dressing is really simple you know we're going to do tuna with this salad but we need to have a little dressing to go with it so we're going to make a mayonnaise based dressing so we've got some mayonnaise here and like i said all this stuff can be done ahead you don't have to do this last minute you can do it all ahead of time so we've got a little dijon mustard just a touch we don't want too much we've got a little bit of honey Ooh. Mm -hmm. just a touch right and then the last thing, because it is winter, right? You know, we're in the middle of winter. You want to use citrus as much as you possibly can. So freshly squeezed orange juice, right? Here, I've just squeezed these orange. I'm going to do about a quarter of a cup. So about half as much of the um, orange juice as you have of the mayonnaise in the, in the dish. And then we're just going to whisk that together. And then make sure you season it with just a little bit of salt and pepper. And it should be fairly thin, right? Don't want it to be too thick. All right. All right. Okay, here's the good part. Now let's talk about the tuna. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do the tuna. Yeah. So the dressing is more salad dressing-like. It is. It is more like a salad dressing, right? Okay. So we've got that light mayonnaise-based dressing. Right. We've got our beets. We're soaking our onions just for another minute or so. 
So we've got some freshly, some fresh tuna, some fresh ahi tuna here, right? And we want to make a little bit of a crust for that. So what I've done is I've ground up four different spices. I use a blender, but if you have a little a coffee mill or you can use, if you have a mortar and pestle, if you want to get that fancy about doing it, you can do the mortar and pestle, right? And so down here in front, I've got all my spices right here. So I've got coriander seed. I'll just zoom in a little bit here. Make sure I adjust my camera <laughs> angle. So, so I've got coriander seeds. I've got yellow mustard seed. I've got black peppercorn and I've got cumin, right? And I've just taken all of these and I've ground them into a nice fine huh. powder, right? Nice paste or not a paste, but just a powder. So now we're going to take our fresh tuna and we're going to coat the outside of the tuna just very lightly with some vegetable oil. So this is um, avocado oil, but just you want to use a fairly neutral oil. You could even use a little olive oil if you want, and that's going to be perfectly fine. All this is is going to be like a little bit of glue, right, for your seasonings to stick on there, right? So first thing we're going to do is put a little bit of salt on the tuna. And you want to do this ahead of time, right? Don't, don't do the, the salt after you've put the um, spice mixture on. So now we're going to scatter some of our spice mixture right here onto this plate. And we're just going to press our tuna, just the big sides, right? You don't need to do the all sides of the, the tuna, but just a nice, get a good coating of it on both sides. The tuna looks beautiful. I know, I was thinking right. that. <laughs> right. And from presentation point of view, it's always good to leave the sides of the tuna here clean, right? Don't, don't get a lot of spice on there if you can avoid it, right? Okay. So that's good to go. All right, good. We're just going to let that sit. All right. So now we've got cast iron skillet is going to be the best way to do this. So you've got your cast iron skillet. We've got started preheating it a little bit so it's getting nice and hot. Give ourselves a little more flame underneath that, right? Now, this is going to be your decision at this point. How much do you want to cook the tuna? Do you want it to be a Very little bit little, on the please. <laughs> very, little. very little very little okay so if you're going to do it very little and you're going to get that nice seared tuna on the outside then we definitely want to make sure our pan is really really nice and hot okay so we're going to let it heat up just a little bit longer right want to make it so that we can put our hand just over it and just can't hold it there for much more than like mm. four or five yeah. seconds the pan is dry right the pan is 100% dry. Okay. So a cast iron skillet is going to be an ideal um, uh, vehicle for this. Or if you have a, another heavy cast iron um, container, this is what we call a French uh, rolled steel pan, which is a lot like cast iron, right? It's the same, has the same sort of properties as cast iron. So we can use that as well. But it's going to transfer that heat really, really nicely. And then obviously, most importantly, you want to use a... a uh, a cooking oil that is uh, that is going to be able to tolerate that high heat, right? Okay, so just giving it another second. You know, while that's heating up right now, I'm just peeling my parsnip, right? And I'll show you what we've got here in just a second. All right, now we're good to go. So here's our vegetable oil. We're just gonna put just a few drops in there. And you really do want to get it so that it's almost smoking. I don't hear it sizzling. That's because my microphone's not close enough to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you really should. So, um, just going to get it. So now what you want to do is you want to watch the tuna down near the bottom and just look for it to slightly start to color up the sides of the fish on the exterior. Once you see it colored between a 16th and an eighth of an inch, then you know that you've cooked that side nicely, right? You've got a nice sear going on that side. So it will be almost ready to turn over the fish, right? So we're just starting to see it whiten. I don't know if you can see that, that, yeah. that strip yeah. of white just along the bottom, mm -hmm. right? So we've got a nice crust on this side. So now we can Pretty. flip the fish 
and give it that second sear. I don't know. The tuna salad in my refrigerator is nothing like this. Really? Well, <laughs> it's, it's very different. <laughs> it is very different. Now, you know, it used to be you had to go to a lot of specialty markets to find really nice fresh tuna. You can still yeah. um, now find good fresh tuna at a lot of the major supermarkets. Um, some of it will be frozen, but that's okay. It freezes really nicely. So it's something that you can keep in your freezer. If you want to just make a quick salad, um, you can certainly do that, right? Okay. Let's just give it one more second to get that second side. Just a little nice sear on there. Okay, question just in yes, case Gabby. somebody doesn't like tuna like I do. Uh -huh. You can leave it there longer to cook longer. You can, you okay. can. And then what you would do is just reduce the heat and just let it cook for a little bit longer or you could pop it into a preheated 400 degree oven for just okay. a few minutes. How does that work? So it's cooked to the degree of doneness that you prefer. All right. So now we've got our tuna. It's nicely seared. Let's just finish putting together our salad. Can you adjust your All cam right. when you get it? There you go. You got it. There we just go. Kidding. So here we go. So here's the parsnip. We've just taken the parsnip. We've taken the peel. Sharp vegetable peeler. Just strips like this down the outside of your parsnip. That's raw. It's absolutely 100% raw. Okay. Now, if you didn't like want to use parsnip, but you still wanted to do something nice and crunchy in there, you could use a carrot without any trouble whatsoever. But I just like to parsnips put a few are nice- Parsnips good. I love parsnips. I mean, there is I, nothing better to me than a fresh parsnip. I just adore them. So it's one I of those things I think parsnips. are grossly underused. Right, so now we've got our parsnips. Here's our onions that we've now drained mm -hmm. from the ice water, right? So we're gonna put a nice bit of our fresh onion in there that's had its bite taken out of it a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? Now the beets, right? So here's our beets. Okay. All right, oops, I missed with a couple pieces of parsnips <laughs> and not go in the bowl. All right, so we're going to dress the salad. Instead of using our mayonnaise-based dressing for the salad, we're going to take a little bit of sherry wine vinegar and some extra virgin olive oil. We're just going to go with the olive oil first. Just put it around the outside, just a couple tablespoons or so, right? We've also got some baby greens in here, but you can use arugula. You could use um, any mix you'd like. You could use some baby spinach, whatever you choose. So a little bit of seasoning. And again, this is why you're keeping your gloves on because you're going to touch those beets one more time. <laughs> now we're going to toss this together. And everything will be a slight pink color. That's okay. Even your parsnips are going to get slight pink <laughs> hue on there. All right. So now we're going to take our dressing that we've got, we made, right? We're going to You haven't used all the dressing, right? Not all of it. Okay. Not quite. Mm. All right, we're almost there. Got our beets spread about. And then what I like to do for this, take the tuna. See if I can get a closer up mm -hmm. shot. There we go. And then we're just going to take it and just make a nice mm -hmm. diagonal cut so you have that pretty piece of fish here and you can just kind of put it about ah, so pretty oh it's gorgeous i i have a question can yes, you Gabby. do the i i think it's gorgeous that way can you do it on individual plates as well absolutely so if you want to do an individual plate a little bit of the dressing down 
um, some of the salad and then put your piece of tuna. And then we're just going to take a little bit more oh, I see now. of mm -hmm. the dressing. Do you know my address? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I've been homebound and that looks woo. So there we go. Favorite. Oh, applause for me. That <laughs> is like the, my favorite looking thing. Not right. tuna so salad. Fresh. Like not I'm tuna <laughs> salad. That's right. That's right. But all, all the lovely flavors that you've got running in here. And so um, just kind That's of something beautiful. nice for the winter with the with all the different sweet and, and sour and and uh, you know and the nice uh, bite of those different spices on the outside of the tuna. I think you'll really enjoy it. Would it help if I told you I was your biggest fan? <laughs> <laughs> and well, you know what? That. It's beautiful for Thank a you. Valentine's dinner too. Yeah, has all the nice reds and pinks and all those colors that are commonly associated with this. Yeah, with this day. <laughs> and frankly, I think it looks very sexy. Thank you. Very, I, Thank it's you. beautiful. Well, all right. hey chef, again, you are just a winner, short, sweet, and fabulous. Right. And mm -hmm. I guess Lynn and I would like to tell you to be sure to like <laughs> and subscribe to stircrazyinthekitchen.com and yes. you'll get the recipe to go along with what you're seeing on the video on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Well, I want some. I'm so hungry. <laughs> hungry. And we'll see you next week. Just next, week. next week. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Gabby. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. That looks good.